All right, good morning, class. Now we're going to deal with, I mean, we're going to tackle about a new topic, which uh, is a combination of all the previous topic that we have discussed so far. So starting from vector components up to the kinematics, all right? And this is called projectile motion. Okay, so what we're going to do here is interpretation of motion, which is, of course, in two dimensions. Okay, so that would be a more practical application for the things that we always like, what do you call this? Experience, things we see from outside, not that we can go outside but during a normal situation right uh, flying ball uh, fireworks in the night a fired bullet from a gun uh, water fountain something like that so those are some of the more common uh, ways of seeing a object moving in a uh, projectile okay or following a path okay so to establish the concept we have to of course illustrate i think this is the most important thing when discussing project projectile motion so you have let's say this person okay so there then here's a ball then this ball that he kicked let's say for example traveling at this path okay so I'm going to label them so you will be uh, familiarized with the things that uh, we are going to encounter on this discussion okay so this particular path so let's say starting from here this is your V sub 0 okay going to this direction okay so this motion that kicked in is of course projectile motion all right so the the distance starting from here going to the other end is uh, based from the previous uh, topics that we have this is of course delta x right which is the horizontal displacement for projectile motion, we call it the range. So this is the length of uh, path that the projectile took. Okay, starting from the place where it started to the place where it will fall. Next, we have this one, this line. Okay, so this is what we call the trajectory. Okay, so this is the path that. Okay, so this is the path that the ball follows, okay, or actually any object that travels on a projectile motion, okay, so this is the trajectory. Alright, then next we have origin, so origin, this, this point, okay, so that's the starting point of the projectile so you can name it as let's say x sub zero all right or y sub zero depends on the axis that you're going to work work with then we have apex or the maximum height okay so this is this point okay uh, from our previous topic we know this as delta y all right so this can be termed as max height okay or the apex okay you got that so there uh, these are the things that you have to remember okay then of course the time it took for uh, this thing to reach the other end all right so that's time 
okay so it's needed as delta t which is the total uh, time that it took for that object to fly so that's called the time of flight okay so uh, the thing that you have to remember on working with objects moving at a projectile motion is the thing that you have learned from the very first topic that we had in physics which is uh, vector addition okay so when uh, analyzing this kinds of example you have to always and always and always consider what what do you think the components okay so there would always be an x component and a y component okay so let's say at this point uh, the ball is moving in this direction and this direction as well it means it's still moving upward and moving forward you get that and then coming at this point it will get slow but the length of the motion on the x-axis is still the same when it reaches this point it's just moving horizontally what's the reason behind of course acceleration due to gravity so at this point upon reaching maximum height your projectile or the object that's traveling in this motion will start falling down okay so something looks like that looks like this but you're going to see that our length i mean i'm trying as much as i can but the length of this axis or the motion on this axis which, which is the x-axis is always the same length okay it's not changing the reason behind that is going to be explained on the derivation of the equations not necessarily derive them fully but for you to fully understand the uh, differences in using the uh, equations that uh, you're going to have so knowing that this is how you're going to deal with it of course uh, you have to deal with it independently so you have to separate the x-axis okay so motions on the x-axis and of course the motion on the y-axis which is uh, the thing that we are going to tackle on the next video all right thank you